Today we're going to be talking about prayer rooms. I don't know what country you're from. I don't know what your prayer room looks like. This is an example. It's a black and white prayer room, but it can be all shapes and sizes. It can be in a little hut. It can be in a outdoors. It can be anywhere. It's what God wants you to make it where you live in your nation. So we're going to look today at preparing the prayer room for the king, the king of all kings. So how you prepare it is so important. We need to take great care in how we prepare it because it's a wonderful thing to do. It's a wonderful undertaking and we want the prayer room to enable every person to center on Christ and maintain a flame of worship that carries them through the ups and downs of daily life outside the prayer room in the real world out there, don't we? So let's look at preparing the prayer room for the king. Well, I want to start with this quote. Every person is different, but we all need to find those people and places that enable us to recenter on Christ regularly so that the reflex reaction of our lives remains prayerful all the time. A season of 24-7 prayer provides a place a time, a context, and a catalyst for this conscious and persistent prayer to continue, both individually and corporately. The prayer room is a picture of constant activity in the heart of every believer. It helps us maintain the flame of worship on the altar of our lives. We leave the prayer room encouraged and enabled to keep on praying consciously and subconsciously through the trials of the day ahead. A regular hour in a 24-7 prayer room is both an expression of and an inspiration for a lifestyle of continual prayer. So we want to bring the prayer room with us outside into the world. We want to have a conscious, subconscious prayer going on during the day. And you know, prayer rooms really help us do this. Prayer rooms help so much and they're all shapes and sizes. That's why putting a picture up doesn't always help because there's so many kinds of prayer room. Preparing a place for the King of Kings, the creator of the universe, to come and dwell is an awesome privilege. It's really a privilege for us to do that. And I've been involved in preparing prayer rooms a few times, and I just say it's an awesome privilege to bring in the very presence of God into a place and make it, create it in a, such a way that people draw near to God. So, think of the prayer room that God wants you to start. And I'm going to ask you three questions. In preparing the prayer room for the king, three questions. How do we create an atmosphere of prayer? How do we decorate the prayer room attractively so people want to come to pray? And what should it look like so that it attracts God's presence? Think about these three things. It's most important. The most important key throughout the whole preparation phase is to seek God together with other like-minded people. Because you want to be able to pray about every detail and every need. And we've had one month houses of prayer in several places. In Virginia Beach in preparation, we got a whole group of people together to pray every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 5.30 a.m. to 7.30 a.m to prepare for it. We prayed about everything again and again. We brought before the Lord our hearts and our desire for our city and the entire region. We prayed about every need. And as we started putting everything together, it just came together just in time. It was as if we were flying the plane as we built it. And it took faith because everything did not fall into place early as we would have liked it to. No, it, it kept us depending on God on a high level and our prayers were fervent because we needed him so much. God knows every need and is fully aware of every challenge in setting up a house of prayer. And as we look back to these initial times, we're amazed at how God worked things out even in the last moment. We must learn to depend fully on him because only he can work out the details is God who makes things grow in the spiritual realm. We can't do it. 
And I remember once working towards three simultaneous one month houses of prayer. That was in Virginia Beach. You can imagine how dependent we were on God to work it out in all three cities. But as we fervently prayed, God gave us guidance and we simply obeyed his leading step by step. And we also met together regularly with the prayer leaders in those locations, kept in close connection with them. But it was totally up to God to work out all the details and answer our prayers. Although we didn't have 24 seven prayer at that time, going continuously in all three locations, we felt it was successful anyway. And our faith grew to the tests we faced during that time. As you start, remember these three questions. How do we create an atmosphere of prayer? How do we decorate the prayer room attractively so people want to come and pray? And what should it look like so that it attracts God's presence? We want to answer those three questions because more prayer in a city is a big success to God. He wants to come and dine with us. God bless you. Oh,